we're going to perform a vacuum filtration, but I think before we do that, I want to come back to the materials that we had just recrystallized. We'll, we'll revisit them again. Here's our, here's our test tube of benzoic acid, and it's just full of crystals. So I'm going to put that in an ice bath. Now, when we say ice bath, we don't really mean uh, just ice. It, it needs to have some water in there so that it's a slush because the, you put something in, in just ice cubes, then it only gets cold where the ice touches the surface. But if there's a liquid in there, then the liquid is ice cold and it has total surface contact. So I'm gonna just stick this tube of, of that, was, that was the water. You know, just for fun, let's put, See, it's liquid, cyclohexane, liquid. Now we're gonna put cyclohexane in there. We'll come back and revisit that guy in a few minutes. Here was our flask of the benzoic acid. And wow, it's almost a total chunk of crystals. Awesome. I'm gonna break it up a little bit. You can see nice slurry of crystals. By the way, these beautiful crystals to a chemist, this is a lot more fun than sticking a, a, a pin in a frog spleen over in bio, so this, this is a lot more fun. All right, that's gonna go into the ice bath while we prepare for the vacuum filtration. To do the vacuum filtration, you need the vacuum filter flask. You're gonna need to clamp the vacuum filter flask because as you will see in a minute, Maybe, I'll, maybe I won't clamp it yet. I'll just show you what's gonna happen if we don't clamp it. The answer is it's gonna fall over and something's gonna break and spill and it'll be a mess. So it needs to be clamped. But we're gonna use a vacuum hose and that's the thick black hose. The wall is extremely thick so when a vacuum is pulled on it, the hose doesn't collapse. Sometimes the white belt students like to use the amber hose. Well, that hose that hose is for running cooling water. And let's see what happens. I'm gonna pinch the end of it here like we're gonna draw a vacuum. Let's see what happens. Did you see that? Here we go. Hose, pinch. Can you see it collapse? You, get, you got no vacuum through there. See that? See how it collapses? So do not use the amber tubing. That's for running cooling water. So this will not work. We've tried that experiment. It doesn't work. Now you want the black hose. Now you have a choice. We have two outlets on the bench. One of them's labeled gas. One of them's labeled vacuum. Which do you want to choose? We've done the one where it's hooked up to gas. You don't want gas. You want the yellow one, vacuum. Now, other end on the, on the hose connection. And now we leave, this, we leave this unclamped and you see what happens? See what this is gonna do if I don't have that clamp? This is, going, this is all going all down the front of me. And I know you might pay money to see that, but that is not, the intent. So we're going to clamp this thing so it doesn't fall over. Put that, put that hose through the two arms. Turn that tight. All right. Now, now it's going nowhere. Then you're going to need the this is called a Buchner funnel. This cer white ceramic funnel is called a Buchner funnel. You need one of those, but in order to make this work with a vacuum, you need one of these rubber vacuum adapters. That goes in the top of the flask, and then the Buchner sits on top of that. And then the rubber makes a nice tight, airtight seal so you can pull the vacuum. If you try this experiment without the rubber thing, you got no seal, you have no vacuum, it doesn't work. Dr. Davison, my stuff's not filtering. Yeah, you have no vacuum. Use the rubber thing. You have to use the right size filter paper. This would be the right size for this Buchner funnel. Sometimes students will, will run out of this 
And uh, rather than go to the stock room and ask for more filter paper, they'll take a large piece of filter paper and try to jam it in there. And that doesn't work because it doesn't make a tight seal. So don't be lazy. Get the right size piece of filter paper, make a tight seal. Now we can turn on the vacuum. Here's a little experiment I like to do because I have a low threshold of entertainment. See that? Now you have a vacuum. You know you have a vacuum. All right, now we're going to revisit our benzoic acid. You know what? Before, I'm going to give that a couple more minutes. Let's see what happened in our test tubes. Here was the benzoic acid in water, and uh, as I flick that around, I think you can see the water is still liquid, and we've got a lot of crystals in there. So that looks good. Let's see what happened to the cyclohexane solution. I flick that around, and can you see? That son of a gun's an ice cube. That's an ice cube. That's not going anywhere. So that, for our purposes, wouldn't be that, wouldn't be that good of a recrystallization solvent. We did get plenty of re uh, crystals at room temperature, so it might be appropriate, but you're in for a surprise if you put that in ice water. All right, now back to our flask of benzoic acid. We have lots of crystals in our flask and water is still liquid with lots of benzoic acid in there. So while I was setting up for the vacuum filtration, I, I put a beaker of uh, DI water into the ice bath also because when we pour these crystals out for the filtration, some of the crystals will remain in the flask and the easy way to get them out is to just rinse them out with a little water but you want the water to be ice cold and not room temperature because the colder the water is, the less soluble the benzoic acid will be in it. So to maximize our percent recovery, we want to make sure we use ice cold water for this wash. All right, so I've got the vacuum on. Uh, one technique is to, is to wet the filter paper with some DI water and that pulls the filter paper tight to the funnel the funnel's tight to the rubber thing, the rubber thing's tight to the glass. We've got a nice tight vacuum here. So here we go. Now, one beginner's mistake is to take this and pour it slowly. And if you pour it slowly, then the liquid comes out and all the crystals are still in here. So I recommend a, a, a somewhat more manly approach where we're gonna swirl this and we're gonna give it a dump. And that took most of the crystals out, but not all. You see, there's still quite a bit left in there. So now I use the ice cold water a little bit, a little bit. Swirl, swirl, that should take most of it off. And I'll do a quick dump of that. Uh, it, looks, it looks like there's a, there's a little bit, there's a little bit still on the bottom. If I want to go after that, I would scrape it with the spatula and wash it out with the water again. But we've gotten the lion's share of the product. Now what you want to do is leave this vacuum turned on for about 10 minutes and let the air draw over the product to dry it. Uh, you know, I think in the interest of time for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to pretend that this, that this stuff is dry because I want to show you what we're going to do with the material next. So it's, it's pretend it's been drying for 10 minutes. We turn off the vacuum. I can, I can disconnect this now. now. Now the flask is probably not gonna fall on the floor. I wanna collect the crystals. I can do that on a watch glass with a spatula. Take a look in there. Maybe you can, maybe you can see those crystals. You may be too too far away, but those are long white needle crystals. And I can, I can scrape them out like this. This is one way to do it. Or I could take, I can just put the spatula underneath the filter paper and lift the filter paper out with all the crystals on it and then, and then scrape the filter paper once I get it, once I get it onto the watch glass.
All right, I'm going to spread some of this out so you can, you can have a look at how nice these crystals are. Can you see that? There's lots, lots of fine white needles. So benzoic acid makes uh, great crystals. All right, well, that's how to do a vacuum filtration. I would like to summarize a little bit some of the important parts. Make sure you clamp the vacuum flask. Make sure you use the right type of hose. Make sure you use the right size filter paper for the funnel. If, uh, if the right size isn't in the drawer, ask the stock room. They'll get you the right size. Don't try to force fit something that's, that's the wrong size. You want to you want to connect the funnel, uh, the funnel to the vacuum. You know what, let me tell you a story about what happened here uh, a few years ago. Somebody got the idea that they would just skip the funnel and put the Buchner flask right into the hose like this and then they poured the liquid in and it went right in here and it uh, ruined the vacuum pump, cost us 1500 bucks to get the vacuum pump done. Don't let me catch you doing this. That's a capital offense if I catch you running that liquid into the vacuum pump. It goes into the flask. I mean, you think that goes without saying, but apparently not sometimes. Uh, we're gonna pour out the, don't pour out the liquid and leave the crystals behind. You wanna do a good swirl and a quick dump, usually. That's the best way to get the crystals out. You may have to scrape the side of the flask. Sometimes the crystals will adhere to the side. You may have to do some scraping before you dump out. To get the last few crystals out, wash with ice cold solvent. In this case, it was water, but if you're using methanol, it's ice cold methanol. Make sure it's ice cold. Don't weigh or take the melting point of wet crystals. Let this thing air dry, or vacuum dry, at least 10 minutes before you collect the crystals and, and take a weight or a melting point. If you, we're going to do melting, talk about melting point next, and if you try to do a melting point on a wet material, uh, the melting point is going to be awful. So don't do that. And I think that's, uh, that's the end of uh, how to do a vacuum filtration, and um, I'll see you back here in a few minutes for a melting point.